name is Lana Brashears, and for my leadership presentation, I chose Alice Paul as my leader. I took a class last spring um, that studied genders, and part of that was um, studying equal rights for all genders. Um, during that during that part of the class, we had a discussion about Alice Paul. It was very brief, um, but just the little bit that we were taught during that class, I was very enticed with her and what she went through during the times when women really didn't have any rights. Um, so I, um, Alice Paul was born into a Quaker family in 1885. And um, this during this time, of course, women had very few rights. She did what something that most women did not do during this time, and she went to college. Um, she started at Swarthmore University, and according to their school's website, they uh, were a college for guarded Quaker children. She did get a degree from that school in 1905, um, which was a bachelor's in biology. Um, she then went on to earn her master's in sociology in 1907 from the University of Pennsylvania. After she had her degrees, she decided to study in England, where um, she worked with the military and other um, different areas of social work. And in London, she served times in, in prison for fighting for suffrage activities there in uh, London, which is women's right to vote, or the right to vote. Um, in 1910, she returned and... Uh, she addressed the National American Women's Suffrage Association at their annual convention in New Jersey, and she was later appointed chairman um, of their congressional committee. This is where she really began began her campaign, um, her campaign for women's rights to vote and equality for all. <laughs> After she um, took this office, she actually put her, she went to law school, um, and according to Beatrice McKenzie in her journal, she, um, Paul, enrolled in law school to acquire the skills needed to advance her suffrage and plans on page 132. Um, this is where she began to learn more about the laws and how to fight it. And ultimately, in 1928, she drafted a treaty for equal rights in the United States. But in 1916, uh, Paul formed the National Women's Party with Lucy Burns. Um, these women were known for radical behaviors um, when it came to picketing and um, other areas to fight for um, equal rights. Um, the form, the women did form their own group and they decided to run it their way. In 1917, the National Women's Party protested in front of the White House. Um, and this was right after the war had ended. President Woodrow Wilson was in office. Um, they had met with him several times and he did not believe that women should have the right to vote. So they decided that they were going to pick us pick at the White House after the war ended. Um, a lot of people thought very badly of this. They were beaten in the streets. They were yelled at, screamed at, um, and ultimately they were arrested. In October of 1917, Paul was sentenced to six months in prison. After she had spent 10 days there, she went on a hunger strike and... Um, she had decided she was not going to eat until her voice was heard. That lasted for a very short time. I believe um, 10 days is what was on the alicepaul.org website. And um, she was then force fed three times a day by the prison staff as she was beaten and secluded from other women um, and treated fairly badly. She then went on to um, get word to a visitor that she was being mistreated so horribly, along with other women in the prison as well, and somehow this was leaked to the press. Um, when the prison started getting more recognition, recognition for the horrible treatment of the women, um, this is when President Wilson seemed to change his view a little bit on women's rights, and he... Um, went to Congress in 1918 and, and encouraged them to pass the bill 
to make um, <laughs> or to give women equal rights when it came to voting. Um, ultimately, that did work, and that would be what we know know now as the Nineteenth Amendment. Um, that was passed on January tenth, nineteen nineteen, according to the law of Congress, and um, it prohibits any U.S. citizen from being denied the right to vote based on their sex, which was very important. Um, I believe Alice Paul is a leader because she stood up for what she believed in, and she really stood her ground, even though during this time that was not something that was really acceptable of women to do, and she just did not back down. Um, and that meant even going up against the President of the United States, which that in itself takes a lot of courage. When I sat and reflected on the five practices of great leadership, um, I, I truly believe that Paul fits into all five categories. Um, as we all do, we have our strongness and our weaknesses in the categories. But Paul just really, in my mind, um, fits each one. Um, the first one is model the way. And this really is, Paul was other women out on the, the front lines. She was at the White House picketing with these women, holding a sign. She could have just stayed in the headquarter office and sent women and others to do these acts. But she was there with them, um, side by side, went to prison, got arrested, I believe seven times in the course of her life, was in prison um, two times. Um, her motto for life was... Uh, Deeds, not words. So she wanted to reflect that I'm here to do this with you. And that's how she looked at other people as well. As not what they were saying, but what they were actually out there doing. <laughs> the second category was inspire a shared vision. And according to Cozen Posner in our, our reading text, um, there was a quote that said, Every organization, every social movement begins with a dream on page 18. Paul shared her dream with every woman out there that just thought that, you know, hey, women women should have a voice. And through that, she went to these organizations that were already established and, and created associations with people that had the same views and had the same, the same dreams that she did. And um, those women all joined together to make those dreams a reality. And that's something that women now in the United States may not know how hard it actually was for us to have the right to vote. The third category is challenge the process. And I think it's fairly safe to say that Paul and her associates challenged every process there was, whether it was picketing the White House, um, starting a starvation strike in prison. Um, she just went everywhere to make this, you know, seem that this is what I believe in and it doesn't matter what you say I can or cannot do. I'm going to do the things that, that need to be done to get recognition to this cause. And sometimes that even inc included breaking the law. Um, the fourth, the fourth category is enabled others to act. Um, Paul was able to educate other women about not having equal rights. She was also to save, share her vision with them and lead organizations that focused on getting these laws amended so women would be able to vote. Um, the women trusted her because she was able to educate them. Um, she went to law school. She did all these things. She traveled. And um, according to our readings in the Leadership Challenge, um, a quote I found in there was, One way to demonstrate our competence is to share what you know and encourage others to do the same. And that was on page 226. And, and that's exactly what Paul did. You know, she, she learned, she was passionate about this, and, and she show, shared that education with other women so that they could see and walk with her and know what they were getting into. <coughs> Encourage the heart um, was the last category. And this is part um, of the leadership that best describes Alice Paul. Um, because it's about setting goals and rules and letting your your team or organization know that this is my goal.